you're listening to the Sanditon Chronicles, where we talk all things Sanditon and Sanditon adjacent. Come along with us as we dissect all of your favorite characters, scenes, and dialogue. We have so much to tell you. Hi guys, welcome back to the Sanditon Chronicles. I'm your host Maureen. I'm Janice. And today we are back with Annie Reed, uh, Lady Denim. I have to stop calling her. <laughs> and I know that her name is Annie Reed, so I don't technically have to stop calling her that, but we're talking Lady Denim today. But I, I love Annie Reed so much. I just, I like kind whatever of, she's in. I like her as an actress. I like her as a human being. Like, I just, I love that woman. And after all the stories we heard from the rest of the cast about her, mm-hmm. we feel like we know her a little bit more. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so today, because we already did a breakdown of her character from our, the Santa Chronicles last season or two seasons ago, uh, we are going to discuss today how she's changed and her relationships with the characters on the show as it is um like whether that's new people or even with georgiana i mean her that was a fun relationship to watch develop i think mm-hmm. and that change was yeah one of my favorites to watch um do you have a favorite lady Den- i almost called her Andy reed again do you have a favorite lady Den- a moment from the season oh that's really hard to say but you know <laughs> one of the things as you were talking that really hit me about how things changed was mm-hmm. when she was doing the gardening party and they brought in that beautiful cake. And she says to Arthur, you seem so enthusiastic to cut my pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, wouldn't you like to cut this cake? And of course, then it all gets shut down by the sugar boycott. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, uh, she um georgiana was right that she was trying to make a point against her but also that was tradition to have all that kind yeah. of thing and, and you know i mean i think it was more lady denim just didn't care about that than it was about yeah sticking it, it to wasn't georgiana. important yeah it wasn't important to her but you know of course georgiana would take it that way regardless of course and i think and, that's because she and, and lady denim had words on the street about it Yes. And, you know, she had a good point that Georgiana did benefit from slavery. Mm-hmm. Her mother was a slave. She still yeah. benefited from it. Absolutely. You know? so, yeah, she has, they give her such wonderful biting lines mm-hmm. that it's it's incredible. I mean, her whole reaction to Clara when she shows up. Oh, another favorite moment. And favorite in a bad way kind of <laughs> is as far as outstanding moment is when they're sitting there before the parade comes and he she says to uh charlotte um oh i see we i see you're still not married you know mm-hmm. the, and mm-hmm. then gives her such a hard time about being a spinster you see what i mean about a bad yeah. time and of course her sister's like all in agreement with <laughs> with lady denim because she wants her to find a beau uh, you know a husband mm-hmm. so yeah that's you know she's always drawing charlotte in or talking to charlotte you know yeah it's interesting because charlotte interests her charlotte is not a yes man and as much as lady denim might complain about that she thrives on that even i mean we saw that in season one where she that scene yeah. where she goes and gives her opinion so freely uh, uh she apologizes when it. goes to apologize yeah yeah that's what and lady denim says you are very free with your opinions well it, it amuses her and, it, and i think it more than amuses her i think that she lady denim is a smart woman she is mm-hmm now she is her own woman so she can do whatever she wants say whatever she wants be whatever she wants and it's okay she's a widow she's wealthy you know she's the world is her oyster and so i think that she enjoys the challenge that charlotte brings to her because charlotte brings different ways of thought that she's not accustomed to but she's delivers it in such a sure way and i think that that is that's something that really sets you on lady denim's notice when you do that i kind of think she might have liked to have been more like charlotte when she was younger oh i think so too yeah. couldn't you know mm-hmm. but couldn't be that way yeah and then when lady denim her reaction when her reaction when um clara arrives mm-hmm. and you know she's like well, what why would i care you know and then finds out that it's edward's 
child and all of a sudden she changes her tune <laughs> yeah she's she and how doubtful she is about edward most of the time but then how she kind of gets sucked in a little bit and yeah oh, one of the greatest lines of course is with, with reverend hankins at the um wedding breakfast mm -hmm. when <laughs> <laughs> when he says uh that he's only uh he's only chosen songs with four five, five or six verses hymns with and she's like we can do without that we and certainly could do without your sermon sermon yeah yeah because he's originally act, asking about if there would be more guests at the wedding you know mm -hmm. it was i mean that what a line you know she just yeah of course you have to think about the line that esther throws out right then too mm -hmm. you know, yeah so and I, I think that and then the other one we talked about last week when she sees Edward, he said, I figured this would be better in prison. We'll see about that. I just yeah. exactly what she said. Oh. But it's, it's the way she says that, the way she delivers those kind of lines. Those are my favorite Lady Denim moments. I like it when she's on screen, no matter what. But when she delivers those bites and those really witty comebacks that, like even Edward, when she said that to him, he just went very still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how, you know, I mean, Edward thinks, somehow thinks he's going to get over on her. How mm -hmm. he thinks that, I don't know. Because of course he, he Well, time. he did in a way, and he especially did in trying to make her at least consider that there was really something wrong with mm -hmm. Esther, you know? Yeah, because, and, I mean, Lady Denham says, more fool me, because he got it over on her again. She got sucked into... One, believing something was wrong with Esther, but I mean, she was almost taking Edward's counsel at that point. Right. Because he, he was with her whenever they met with the doctor. So she was right. including yeah. him into the fold. He snuck his way back in. And I think he thinks I'll always be able to do this. But I think like me, doing that to Esther was Lady Denham's last drop because Lady, Lady Denham loves Esther. And yeah. Esther is, I mean, Esther is essentially what Lady Denham used to be. You know, we talked about that in right. season one, how they had that moment right. towards the end and it, you could see that she relates to Esther more than just loves her, but it's both of those things. And so I think now that Edward did that to Esther and took it that further step, I think he's naive in thinking that he'll be able to get into her skin again, but Lady Dunham's, I think not going to forgive him. Yeah. I don't think she'll ever really, she'll trust him again. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it would have to take a honest change not the yeah. appearance of change i don't think yeah. he'll do that oh i don't either no and i don't, I don't know think lady it... den would trust it even if it did happen yeah it'll be interesting to see what they do with that whole story this next season because mm -hmm. they're more creative than i about where i go with it <laughs> i want to see edward get what he deserves and i think lady denim is going to be a big tool in making sure that that happens like i said i mean he hurt her girl and I think Lady Denim is going to punish him. And I'm really he'll excited. Try, because... But he'll probably try and sneak around behind oh, her back. Sure. And, sure he will. You know. But I think that Lady Denim, I think we're going to be surprised with the tight grip that she keeps on him in the next season in a good way. I, I, I oh. want to see her do that because he was it wasn't just Esther that he screwed over. It was Lady Denim over and over and over and over again. I mean, even True. after what he did to her in season three. Or season one, I mean, <laughs> got a little ahead of myself there. What he did in season one when he, <laughs> she was dying, and he was like, yes, and then he burned the will. She forgave him after that, and that was a pretty big thing. Yeah. But I think doing something to someone she loves is something she won't forgive. She can forgive it done to herself, but I don't think she can forgive doing it to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. And of course, one of the things that we love about Annie Reed is her facial expressions. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think about... um at the street fair, the fair where they have the balloon and the look on her face, looking up at that balloon. <laughs> and then especially when um, Arthur gets a hold of the bottom of it, you know, cause it comes <laughs> right at him. And just, you know, she was, she did have wanted no part of that balloon. Although she was fascinated by it, you could tell. Mm -hmm. yeah. She likes, she does she complains about innovation and she complains about, doing oh, things yeah. to the town but i think that she it's ingenuity that she it garners her respect and things that she doesn't understand i think she's interested in because she wants to understand things right 
And I think it's part of the reason she fights change so much is because she wants to know everything about everything. True, true. And think about, um, I'm also thinking about when there ha- he's have she's having that discussion with Tom and Arthur, I think, are walking together. And uh, she is talking about how much they owe um, Sydney's widow. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, she's always on top of the money part of it. Yeah. Know? I mean, she's, which is what's surprising about how much money she spent on that garden party and <laughs> no one ate the food <laughs> yeah well they ate the food they didn't eat the sweet cake <laughs> it was also like the macaroons and there was all these little sweet treats that filled that whole cake table that no one really touched at least not where we saw <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and she challenges people because i think I think part of it is she want there's no lo- there's no losing situation there because if she challenges them and they back down she's won but if she challenges them and they rise to the occasion she can also say I did that I got yeah. them to that place and I think I think part of her actually likes seeing people rise to the occasion of course I think in the garden party she was pretty irritated that no one ate her delights because I mean she was pretty proud of that cake like she was oh yeah as if yeah, she had that- made it herself she was so proud of that cake yeah and you can imagine what it cost right and yeah and the other thing i mean really when you think about it lady denim is the one who goes across all these people and is has association with them more than some of the other people in the series and because she's connected with the parkers she connected with the denims she you know what i mean and so i think too about um the at the garden party when they're doing the archery contest and how she really how she eggs on um colonel lennox Mm -hmm. about his the rival and you know to get they ask colburn to participate in that you know and how her comment about colburn's father Mm -hmm. uh, you know she's very connected to everybody in the show really And she's been in that town for longer than it's been something. I mean, Tom just recently in the, uh, I would even say the last decade has been preparing to make Sanderson what it is and what it's becoming. Before that, it wasn't that big of a deal. But Lady Denham has been there. This has been her kingdom, so to speak. I mean, she's been the lady of that town for so long that she knows all those people. She knows the history. She knows what it should be. She's, She's connected to it as much as the people. And she is, um, you know, we might not realize how invested um, emotionally she mm-hmm. is into the in the town. We just might think it was just financial, except for the fact that we know what her will said. Yep. From season one, so mm-hmm. um, we know that it, it, she was going to give all the money to to the development of Sanditon um, when she dies. Yeah. So she's, you know. For all of her bluster with Tom, the truth of the matter is she cares at least as much he, as he does mm-hmm. about it. And she doesn't, I mean, she gets accolades in terms of she's the main investor, but mm-hmm. Tom is the one building this town. Tom wants to be revered as the man who made this town what it is. Lady Denham wants to see this town thrive. She wants right. to be a part of seeing the town thrive. And I think it's even her character, like it's interesting to see in season one, when she came at Georgiana at the luncheon, she didn't come at her because she's that cruel and vindictive of a person. She kind of came at her because she was rankled that Georgiana came at her first. She felt she did. She felt Georgiana. Mm-hmm. And that was why she was so openly offensive and rude because she was trying to get under Georgiana's skin. And you can kind of see that's a little more toned down the season with her and Georgiana. But she still tries to push and prod and poke at Georgiana whenever she sees her. Like when they had the confrontation in the street, she stopped what she was doing to walk over to where Georgiana was handing out those sugar boycott things. Right. Right. But and I think, you know, but in that case, what really got to her was the sugar boycott mm-hmm. and how ridiculous she thought it was. Yeah. But she so. also thought it was a double standard too from Georgiana that Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're benefiting from this and it's it's uh and yet you're trying to bite the hand that feeds you as it were. 
or that fed you. So yeah, it's it's just real interesting. She's such an interesting character and so central. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you something else I would love to see happen, but it probably won't, is for her to pursue which of her staff let um Edward get oh. those letters. Mm -hmm. Some of them were just sitting there, but he went beyond that and paid somebody to to bring those to him. And I'm I'm willing to bet that Edward will still try to use that same employee to help him either get under Lady Denham or try to get in good with Lady Denham. And I think Lady Denham hopefully will figure that out rather than yeah. be pulled over on her again. Yeah, it's so funny. And also she reflects the tone, really in some way she reflects the tone that we as viewers um, have as the series goes on, because at first she's like, I'm happy to have a red coat here. My mm -hmm. brother was a, was a red coat, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then by the end, she's like, oh, you know, he's taking, they, they're just taking advantage. My friend told me what happened in another town, mm -hmm. how they, you know, built, ran up all this credit and didn't pay their bills. And, yeah. You know, so, and we see that develop and she reflects it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's interesting because Lady Denham, for as smart as she is, and as much as she likes to have her hand in all these different things, she has a bit of naivete about her. Like, mm -hmm. she was excited about the Redcoats coming simply because they were Redcoat. And that's, that was a little, that was a little naive of her to, to be that excited. But even with, with um, the things that happened in season one, you saw a little bit of naivete come out in her. And she's mm -hmm. a little, she's a little, I tarnished is the word coming to my head, but that's not the right word. She's a little closed off from what she experienced in her youth with that man marrying someone older or someone wealthier. And she realized that love was not something that you could have sort of thing. So she's a little more uh, wise about that stuff. But as it comes to the town, she's either... It's this weird mix of she's either got a really tight grip on what she'll allow or she naively thinks that these things are going to be good and awesome and amazing just because it's a, for instance, just because it's a red coat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. She's at, at, in her later years. She's really been stuck just there in Sanditon. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really know where it was she grew up, if she grew up there or not. Yeah. We just know that she married Denim and. Mm -hmm. and they're there because of his the of sanditon house yeah at least you get that feeling you know so you don't really know mm -hmm. and i think she likes it there i think she really does enjoy i think she enjoys her position i think she enjoys her status her notoriety i think she well, really she, really enjoys all that she doesn't have much competition does she no at all no. when it comes to lords and ladies i mean you know she's it until and, somebody comes to visit exactly and she can say whatever she wants and no one can say boo to her because she is the high person in that town. So I think she enjoys that freedom that she has there to just do, say, whatever she wants. And I think it's really interesting, too, this time that they had her and um, Mary and was it Charlotte and and Ash um, Allison. Allison that played cards? Was it the four of them? I can't remember. I just remember Mary and, and Lady Denham. I don't, I don't remember, remember who else was there. Hmm, now I have to go back and look at that scene again. But oh, darn, we'll have to watch Sanditon again. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's interesting that they brought them together like that, mm -hmm. you know, in this in this series. It was an opportunity for her to tell Mary what she wanted him yeah. to tell Tom, which was was interesting they did that you know because of course mary's very respectful to to lady denim but i wouldn't say they were close no he's she's been pretty dismissive of mary but i think at the end of season one we could kind of see that mary is the good part of tom and oh, i yeah. think i think lady denim was smart enough to pick up on the fact that to yeah. get tom to do something you really need to go through mary because he respects right. and listens to Mary. Mary is the one who he'll want to do right by. Right, right. And and we as we see, she solves the problem with paying the um 
shopkeepers. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we can talk about that later, but yeah, they're both very strong people. Yeah. And I think I, it was nice to see that really, because I mean, previously she went right to Tom with any complaint, right to Tom with any idea. Anything she wanted was him and oftentimes calling him to her so she could complain about something, give her opinion about something. But it, it was nice to see her go to Mary because I think Mary is a really strong character. And I think that she is mm -hmm. not given the credit her character is due, but you can kind of see Lady Denham respecting her more in season two. And I think probably a lot of that is because in season one, they were sticking a little more closely to Jane Austen's, you know, 11 chapters. Mm -hmm. And she was not shown as a strong person yeah. in that those 11 chapters. But we don't know where uh, Jane Austen would have taken her. Mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, Jane Austen was characteristic for wanting women who were like, if you were a main part of her story, oftentimes you were a strong female, whether it was negative or positive, but you were a strong female character. I think she wrote those characters right. well. I mean, she obviously wrote for Volley well because Lydia Bennett was incredibly frivolous. Even Marianne was a right. little bit frivolous. So, I mean, not that all of her characters are this upstanding, her heroic, functioning woman, but they have a strong personality. They're, they're not hidden in her books. I guess right. I'm right go on there. Right. And and you know, let's face it that Justin Young, excuse me, yeah, Justin Young in this season, and I'm sure in the third season, he moved away from one of those away from those more weak women, you know, mm -hmm. um, than at least the the tidbit tells us. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and for modern audiences even though it's said in that culture and that time, this is more acceptable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And I think that Lady Denham, even with, with everyone she interacted with in this season, you got to see a different side of her than you saw in season one. Yeah. Yeah. It, Much more rounded character. Yes. Because I, I'm struggling to like find the, what exactly was different. And I want to say, well, she was softer, but then, no, but she was harder. So she's, but she has all these different aspects to her character that are way more pronounced in season two. And mm -hmm. I like seeing all of them work together to be this really well-rounded woman who is, who's both wise and naive, who's both soft and hard. It just, she's a really complex character. There's layers to her. And I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy when Lady Denim is on the scene so much because she has so many layers to her character and maybe and some yet, people disagree with that, but I see so many different facets. I, I agree with you. And she, but she's still essentially herself. Exactly. She, she, they haven't taken her, you know, they haven't changed her that mm -hmm. way. She just, we see more. That's it. We see more yeah. of her and more of who she is. And mm -hmm. even like in that scene at the wedding, <laughs> wedding breakfast um, with Edward and Clara and Esther, her sheer outrage i mean we saw her we've seen her anger before on her deathbed we saw her yell mm -hmm. at the same people and <laughs> in fact it was all three right. of them were in the room when she did it so all three yeah. of them again and there was something different about the way she expressed her her outrage but it was still lady denim being lady denim there was still that wit there was still that fire there was still those words in fact in season one, she called them, what did she call them? Parasites, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then season two, and that's in that um, scene, she also called them parasites? I don't remember that. In season that. one, it was you feeble parasites. Yeah. But she called them uh, something in see. I think it was, I think it was different. But that scene, I've watched that scene in season one so many times that that's the only, right. that's the only dialogue that I can accurately call back and remember. She says to Edward, you asked for forgiveness and I gave it. You asked for shelter and I gave it. I chose to believe your remorse was genuine. More fool me. You are despicable, the pair of you. I have thought of no punishment severe enough. And then, of course, Esther speaks up yeah. for Clara and says, she's just as big a victim as I am. Yeah. So she says, you're despicable, the pair of you. And then in season one, she says, you ungrateful, you feeble parasites. So it's... Yeah. 
more name calling in season one, but there's somehow there manages to be more outrage displayed in Lady Denim in season well, two. Because and, she really saw how mm-hmm. it wasn't just that somebody was after their money. Yes. He really mistreated Esther. I think that's what the big difference was. Mm-hmm. And it was her protective nature that was coming out that we didn't see. A whole, I mean, we saw glimpses of that season one when after Edward leaves and it's just her and Esther in the house. And she's, when she's playing cards with Esther, when she's talking to Esther about her past, when Babington comes over, we see those glimpses of protection in her. But this outrage in season two is purely born of someone who she dearly loves being abused and traumatized in this way. And so it was just, we got both of those aspects of her kit. We got the outrage in both seasons, but it was different in this season. Still Lady Denim being Lady Denim, but we saw a little more deeper into that. Yeah. And I'm sense. just thinking again about another scene that I love of her. Yeah. Um, uh, and that is when they're at that dinner and she's sitting next to um, Colonel Lennox and mm-hmm. uh, um, Lockhart gets up and makes that statement about the French, you know, and she just says, oh, don't mind him. He's just a, an artist. <laughs> you know, that's such a great line. And it shut down anything worse that might have happened. Absolutely. You know, it's Georgiana was the one in season one who was kind of being mouthy at a dinner or a luncheon in that way. And it was a different reaction that came out of Lady Denim then. So yeah. I think you can see that she's she's learned a bit more. She's, ex- not that she, I don't want to say she experienced more, but she has learned more control maybe. I'm trying to pinpoint exactly what it is between season one and season two with her character. I know she's I a character, know. so they didn't actually grow or learn. It's written a certain way. I understand that. But there's a certain way. Her character seems so much the same, but so different at the same time from season one to season two. And I can't pinpoint yeah. one single thing. No, it's, yeah, it's, it's just complex. That's all. Mm-hmm. And she's, she definitely shuts down any trouble there by making that statement. No. Um, she's just as disgusted as she was with, with I think, of Arthur even more than mm-hmm. than uh, Georgiana, you know, with Arthur cutting into her pineapple. I mean, how could <laughs> she do that? And then it turns out to be rotten to the core. Oh, one of, one of my favorite scenes from season one is that scene right there for obvious reasons. But even the next day when Tom was like, She's still frustrated at the way Arthur handled her pineapple. And then they all burst out laughing. <laughs> so disrespectfully, the dis- disrespectful manner with which she handled her pineapple. <laughs> because yeah. she, and even he says, she's a silly old woman. <laughs> I yeah. don't think she, I think she's stubborn. I think she is set in her ways and she wants what she wants. But I wouldn't yeah. classify her as silly. I mean, she was ridiculous in season one, but I, now silly is not a word I would describe her way. No, no. And she's capable of some real feeling, uh, mm-hmm. which we saw a glimpse of even at the end of season one, when just from the look on her face, when Charlotte says, um, if you pursue the, the net debt now, you may be um, hurting yourself. You yeah. Know? And that look on her face, like, well, yeah, she's really making a point. And, you know, I'm not going to sit in just my anger. Mm-hmm. And uh, the good thing about sort of the end of season two is when, <clears throat> excuse me, when uh, she says, when Edward comes to, when she confronts Edwards and she says, I've been considering what punishment fits your crime. And Edward says, I will spare you the trouble. I, I assume I am banished forever. And then she says, what is the point in throwing you out when you will only return like the bad penny you are? And then, of course, she isn't stupid. She writes to the colonel. Yeah. She knows he's coming back because he has nowhere else to go. He's proven that <laughs> by just showing up in Sanditon, you know. She's given Again. so many great lines and she delivers them so perfectly yeah yeah she's really good what was it crystal yeah. clark said no one can deliver a slap in the face like annie reed or she has this yeah. way of delivering one-liners that just feel like a slap in the face every time something like that I, it was an interview yeah. crystal clark did and she said that about annie reed yeah accurate yeah. 
Yeah, very, very accurate. And they're so filled with wit. Mm -hmm. All of them. And I know that's writing, but there is a lot of what Andy Reid delivers. It's how she delivers her lines. Almost, almost more so than the lines themselves. Yeah. And just the expression that goes along mm -hmm. with them. And, exactly. You know. Everything about it. Yeah. I think she had a really good time going from playing in, in a period piece, going mm -hmm. from playing the cook or the housekeeper to being in um, upstairs, downstairs. She plays a cook. Oh, yeah. That's been and, on my list for a long time and I never watched it. Oh, it's so good. It's well I'm worth it. Well, if Annie reads it, I'm going to have to start watching it. Yeah. She's in a lot more other modern pieces, but that one's fun because it's a period, mm -hmm. period piece. The other thing that is interesting about her character is for as hard as she is and for as her moral code that she stands by, what she does for Clara is not something that she would have had to do. No. Clara coming back pregnant, she did not have to house her. She certainly didn't have to go find somewhere for Clara to live with her son either. So you see right. these, and no one really, she didn't talk to anybody about that. She no. didn't tell Esther even, I'm doing this for her. She no, said she, but her. she really, she listened obviously to what Esther had to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think seeing someone like Esther be able to have influence in Lady Denim, how she acts, how she thinks about things, and seeing Charlotte, these are strong women that she responds to. Tom right. can tell her something and she can look at him like he's a complete moron. <laughs> But then Charlotte yeah. can come and say the same thing. Just, hmm, that's a good yeah. point. I should think about that. She really responds, that character really responds to strong women and she responds to women who are good. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It was even with Clara. I mean, Clara, in the first season, Clara couldn't pull the wool over her eyes. I mean, no. obviously with Edward, Lady Jenna was not expecting them to do that. But yeah. she also didn't think that Clara was this upstanding, perfectionate thing. It was her i and not i can't it was her uh oh my gosh i'm blanking on every word i want to say right now <laughs> trophy of sorts clara was her trophy of well sorts she of was things. the person she was well it's what esther says you know your charity and then oh mm -hmm. boy did that throw her <laughs> she's like i don't I, I don't believe in charity and yet she does she does you know, she because that. she displays it every season yeah yeah so I'm excited to see where this is going to go from here. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like to see her handle Edward. I would like her to be the one to handle Edward's punishment because I think it would be one. It would be good because I mean, he's, we aren't getting Esther or Clara back and Edward has harmed them the most. So by extension have has harmed Lady Denim the most out of all the characters. So it'd be nice for that. But also it would be really rewarding to see Lady Denim show Edward once and for all that he is he is nothing that he he's as worthless as she said he is and to have her be the one to administer it would be really satisfying for me to see that and i would like her to kind of i don't know because arthur has really good ideas about the town tom has some but they need to listen to other people other than just themselves so i'd like to see her kind of expand a little bit more on sanditon it'd be interesting to see if she puts Edward to work doing something, mm -hmm. that would be perfect. If he had to He's actually a carpenter work. in the town <laughs> or, or, you know, whatever <laughs> cleans the streets. I mean, do oh, some kind of work. Yes. <laughs> That'd be so fitting. He would hate that so much. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Any kind of work he would hate. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see where it goes. Do you have any thoughts on what, what her role might be in season three? I I really don't have a clue where it's going to go unless, yeah, unless they, I, I really don't know. I really don't know what they're going to do. She's hard I to figure get, out her role or what it, it what is. Of it. And, and especially now that um, Clara and Esther are gone mm -hmm. and it's, I couldn't have guessed that this season would have gone this way, the way mm -hmm. they came up with it. So I don't know. It'll be, I, I agree it'll, you know what she might do? They might, if um, Colburn is going to come back and try and get the money, you know, challenge the will against Georgiana, I can see Lockhart. Lady Denim, 
Lockhart. What did I say? Colburn. I was like, wait, what? He's doing what? No, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> Lockhart. I don't know why I said Colburn. If Lockhart is going to come back and um, challenge the will, which we kind of think is what's going to happen, mm -hmm. uh, I can see Lady Danum actually standing up for Georgiana. Yeah. I agree completely. I think she has a lot of respect. She doesn't really like the boycott of the sugar tree, but I think she has a lot of respect for Georgiana and who she is as a human being. Yeah. And I think she also, I think that she is of the mind that it's Georgiana's money that's hers and you can't take yeah. that from her, especially as a woman who is not married, who has her own wealth. I think that she would really stand in the gap for Georgiana. And, and I could see him coming back and doing a portrait for her and then her finding out the truth about what he was there mm, for. That could be, yeah. I wish There's I knew how many episodes he was going to be in so I could kind of like make it a guess. My guesses aren't always right, but I would still like to make one. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> That's the beauty yeah, of good writing. <laughs> yep, it'll be fun. So I don't really have anything else to say unless no. you do. No, I love her. I'm glad she's getting back. I'm glad they aren't taking away all of my favorite characters next season. So, and that sounds, I love these characters of Santa. There's, I love them all, but my favorite is gone. So, and my other favorite is gone. And Lady Denim is a, in my top five of favorite people. So, but, next. but your favorite had a happy ending. She did. Both of them did. My two favorites had a happy yes. ending. So, so they had Jane Austen ending. What they did. That's exactly right. So I'm totally unsatisfied there. I just I'm gonna miss seeing Esther, and I already miss seeing miss seeing Babington, but I'm I'm gonna miss seeing Esther for sure. But next week we are gonna come back with talk about the Parkers. Um, we're gonna talk about the three Parkers who are left. Well, there are four left. I forgot Diana for a minute because she was nowhere in here. And there's some fun, there's just that one conversation, how they explain her absence was really hilarious to me. So I can't wait to talk about them. I can't wait to dive into that. Arthur is going to be the main topic next week, but um, Mary and Tom will be in, in the conversation too about the Parkers. So next week, we'll talk about that. Don't forget to check out our Facebook group, the Sanderson Chronicles, Sanderson Family Fan Club. And I'm, I eventually will get more involved in there. I think right after October 12th, I'll be more of a functioning human being. My treatment will be all done as of October 12th. We're going to have to have like some huge party on here or something, but <laughs> I won't have any more good. cancer treatments after that. So I will be more uh, in answering your emails and into our social media pages and groups. So stay tuned for that next week and we'll see you real soon. Bye guys. Bye bye. Are you craving more TSC content? Head on over to our social media accounts. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and our Facebook group, The Sanderson Chronicles, Sanderson Family Fan Club. Also, check out our website, thesandersonchronicles.com. Of course, we want to hear from you. We want to know what you want to hear and what your thoughts are. Email us at the.sandersonchronicles at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tune in every week for new episodes. <laughs>